Well, I worked for the city in the town where I grew up. Some days I run to back home, and some days I run to done. If I had other plans on my graduation day, several years ago I guess I haul them all away. Yeah, I haul them all away. Well, she told me she. Good morning. It's rainy. Thursday. What's up, everyone? Good morning. Rainy Thursday morning. Drinking out of my little Megus Lodge mug. Coffee's hot, but good. Let's see who we got. Morning, everyone. We got Abe. We got Norm. We got Troy. We got Josh. We got Amanda. We got Jake. Mac needs some work to be a better running buddy. Mac and I went for a run this morning. Five o'clock run. 5.30. He's getting better. Very scared of the of, of Broadway and the Main Street. Periscope, we got Kyle. What up, Jamie? N-E for Yankees. Nebraska for Yankees. Cool. Nebraska. All right. Morning. Morning, morning, morning. Everyone's saying morning. Facebook, we got any shout-outs in there? Coffee and Tampa Bay Rays baseball. Love it. I don't know if we're going to talk about the Rays, but we may. Morning from Maine. Morning from Alberta. Morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? What's up? I, uh, I'm without half of the equipment I usually use. So we'll see how this goes. Usually I have a, a switcher to put the graphics on the screen. Right here in my right hand, I just hit buttons. Boom, boom, boom. Now I got to use my keyboard. Usually I have a second monitor over here that I can read the chat or, or put things on the side to look at. I'm out. We had to take it all to the office, which still doesn't have enough technology to do everything we want to do. Technology is crazy, man. It's so expensive damn expensive so damn confusing to hook up the cameras to the live stream we have like it was like four converters involved from mac to hdmi to sdi it's crazy it's nuts anyway hope everyone's doing well this morning i was actually kind of relieved it's it's rainy out and uh, only 70 today because inside secret i'm out of shorts We're doing laundry today. Mac peed on the bed when I put him on the bed to wake up Katie. So we're doing laundry. I'm out of shorts. And I was like, if it's 85 degrees again, I don't know what I'm going to do here, but it's not. So I'm good. I'm good. That was Chris Knight. I like that song. It's kind of slow. I, I've, I've dodged it a bunch because it's like a, it's a, my favorite Chris Knight song, but it's slow, but I like slow music. So whatever. Anyway, it landed on Friday, like two Fridays in a row. And I was like, get out of here. Today, John Boy Media, we got a brand new uh, addition to the program. Laughs from the Past has been a podcast forever. We're in our eighth season. It's really fun. We talk about history in like a very common sense, lighthearted way. We're doing mini episodes now, only 20 minutes long, just random stories. This story is about the CIA operation called Skyhook. It's basically the Batman thing when he extracts himself from the bank. The CIA had these paratroopers. They would send them into crazy places, and then they would re- steal data. I don't want to give everything away. Then they would they would attach a balloon to their body, have it float up in the air, and then a plane would fly by, grab the balloon, which would grab them, and then they'd be like reeled up like fish into the plane. They did it once. It was called Project Cold Feet. Go check out Laughs from the Past. It's like a 20-minute episode. I actually may put it on the main channel. Just as like a use the as like a marketing tool, I guess. Let it get it more out there. The last from the past, good. John and Jake Radio will be doing that from the office in an hour and twenty minutes. And sequence comes out today. Is it still Trevor May on sequence with uh, Ploof? Yeah, this one is the title is Trevor May got the best of All Star Joey Gallo in a long battle. Cool. Where uh, Trev kind of wants our titles for sequence and stuff to be a little more clickbaity, but I hate that stuff. Um, like you guys seen the breakdown titles? They're just literally what happens. It's rarely anything. 
But like, if you go to other channels, there's always you guys know that are watching YouTube. There's always one word in all caps. It's usually like exciting or wild. Um, so we're trying to figure that out because sequence should be getting more views because it's really good stuff. It's funny because it, it gets views within the league. Scouts, coaches, players are all tuning in just because they want to hear what other players' thoughts are when they're in the box. So, interesting. That's what's coming out on Jumbo Media today. And the weather in Elyria, Ohio. It's 64 degrees, partly cloudy. Looks like it's going to be a nice day in Elyria, Ohio, which... Kind of nothing crazy about Elyria, Ohio. It's located at the forks of the Black River in Northeast Ohio. And its most popular attraction is this place called Cascade Park. Anyone from Elyria? It's named after a dude named Eli. So Eli, Elyria. Uh, This is what it looks like. Right by Lake Erie, which third best Great Lake. What's everyone's Great Lake rankings? Please... Please send those into the comments. If you could rank the Great Lakes, I'm partial to Huron because I played hockey there and fell through the ice there one winter. But this is where this place is. All right, here we go. No board. I got you get Elyria, Ohio. They got a memorial park, South Park. There's this Black River right here. Rivers are wild. And then where's uh, Cascade Park? So this is their most famous little area, I guess. Like, they got pictures of a waterfall, and it's pretty pretty funny because, like, you can get some nice pictures of this waterfall. Like, look at this this picture of the waterfall at Cascade Park in Ohio, and you're like, wow, that must be beautiful. And then this picture, same thing. And then you see some other pictures, and you're like, oh, it's not. It's not really that. It's nothing. Kind of thick. That's Cascade Park in Elyria. But this did send me down a rabbit hole. Should I play my rabbit hole music? This did send me down a rabbit hole. Let's see if I can play it. I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole with you. With you. Um... I was looking at the notable people from Elyria, Ohio, and this dude, the the inventor of the bicycle seat, is from Elyria, Ohio. I forget what his name was. Didn't uh, it was Arthur Lovett Garford? He invented the bike seat. Okay, and I was like, that's crazy. Did bikes just not have seats? Were people just sitting on poles? Like what? What's going on? And then I realized, oh no, he invented. The little spring, so it wasn't like a shitty ride. It absorbed the bounces. So, and they were not called bike seats at the time, which I thought was really weird. They were called, like the official patent is saddle for, ve- fuck, velos- velocipede, velocipede. Bikes were called velocipedes. Did you guys know this? Do we have any uh, history of bike enthusiasts in the chat? Just velocipede was the name. So I went down a wormhole of like velocipede, velocipede bicycle. And there's this video of this guy riding this velocipede bone shaker. Badass name. I think they meant it because it was just a terrible ride. And this one, this bike is from 18. So I went through the history of bikes today because uh, Illyria has the bike seat inventor. Like, look at that bike seat. No springs. Probably sucked. Thank God for our guy, Arthur Lovett Garford, that he invented a, a better bike seat. This dude, so this bike's from 1869. I don't even really understand it. Like, it looks like the tires are metal and everything's metal. And watch when he rides this. It looks like the dude doesn't know how to ride a bike, but I think he does. I think these bikes are just hard to ride. Look at the pedals. Everything's metal. 
Like obviously, it's just a machine. Look how, look how, look how shitty that is to ride. Um, like, really got to work hard. So I, I did the history of bicycles. And then when you do the history of, like, look at this dude. He's just struggling. Just struggling. Looks like a kid. When, uh, so then, so then, because when you do bicycle stuff, you got to, you got to look up the Penny Farth bike, which is such a fucking ridiculous thing. The Penny Farth bike came after the Velocipede because they thought it would be faster if the wheel was bigger and they had races, but they said it was super dangerous because you're sitting on top of the front reel. So if the front and Hey, if I say wheel reel, you can't make fun of me. Um, they're sitting on top of the wheel. So I was reading about injuries on Penny Farth bikes and they're like, yeah, you'd get fucked up. And when got, when people were riding these bikes downhill, because if the front wheel hit a bump, they would just get, go fly forward and like get like really messed up. So when they were riding downhill, they'd put their legs over the steer, the handlebar so that when they went flying forward, they could at least land on their feet and not their head first. And it's like, why did, why did these exist? Seems crazy dangerous. They still happen. Penny, forget it. it. I don't get it. But that's what Illyria, they got that waterfall, that beautiful waterfall, and they got Penny Farth bike racing, and bam, we've covered Illyria. And that's all I have to say about that. Well, behind the scenes, usually I just hit the number two on my laptop and that sound bite plays, but now it won't do it. I'm going to slide it over to number three and see if that works. No, what the hell? Q? Not working. Bummer. Everything's broken. Random baseball player of the day is Glenn Davis. Played for, I don't know. I forget. Played in the 90s. MVP votes like three years in a row. And he's got a brother named Storm Davis, but they're not related. Glenn Davis, 19.7 war he accumulated. He got rookie of the year votes. He plays second in the MVP in 1986, eighth in the MVP in 88, seventh in the MVP in 89, eighth in the MVP in 88. How many votes did he get? Okay, good amount. Not a, not a fake placement. I didn't know Glenn Davis, but they say that his parents divorced when he was eight. So, and it was bad, I guess. I don't really know. I'm just reading what I read. But it was interesting because the Storm Davis, another MLB player, his parents basically adopted him. So I'm guessing he was always over. They're best friends. They consider themselves brothers. It's just complete happenstance that they have the same last name. They're not related at all, but they consider themselves brothers, which I was like, wait, that seems like serendipity, no? They both get drafted at the same exact, um, they both get drafted the same year by the same team, the Orioles. Storm Davis went way before Glenn, so Glenn went to college for a little bit. They eventually are teammates on the Orioles for one year. They did face each other. I found that. Glenn Davis was pretty good. Pretty good power hitter. Then he got injuries, and then he didn't like, and then he punched something, hurt his hand, something like that. I don't know. He left the Orioles. He's known as one of the worst trades in Baltimore Orioles history. So that's always good to be known for. The Orioles traded him to, they traded for him, and they gave the Astros Steve Finley, Pete Harnish, and Kurt Schilling. So bad trade. Bad trade. But then uh, after Davis got traded, he then signed a, a, a contract with the Orioles. He played for them a little bit. Then he got hit in the head by a, a foul ball after he was done in AAA, came back up, got hit in the head with a foul ball. That fucked him up for a little bit. He was finally reactivated, but following an argument with Orioles manager Johnny Oates, great name, about being left out of the starting lineup against left-handed pitcher, he was released by the club without playing another game. So that sounds bad. But anyway, here are his at-bats against 
his brother, who's not really his brother, but they share the same last name, but that's just coincidental. Um, what the fuck? Baseball reference just officially switched over to Stathead Baseball. Is that like their new name forever, or is it still Baseball Reference and Stathead is a section? I don't know, but um, I had this earlier. Let's see. We got to go. Oh, I was on a different computer. I was on a different computer. There's my login password. Okay. Davis versus Davis is what we're looking for. Storm Davis and Glenn Davis. Brothers, not brothers. Two plate appearances in one game. And Storm walked his brother, but not brother. And then he hit him. That sucks. Maybe Storm Davis felt bad for him. That's very non-competitive at bats between brothers who aren't brothers, but are brothers. You would have liked more fun there. You would have liked a lot more fun. Well, since we're here, let's see how stat head. It's all different now. They changed the whole layout on me. Uh, let's, how do we pitcher status? All right, let's see how Glenn Davis did against Hall of Famers. He, oh, good numbers versus Nolan Ryan. Four for 10 with a double. Pretty small sample size. Hall of Famer, he has the most at-bats against uh, the Braves. The Braves. And the Braves kind of carved him up. Smoltz, 143 batting average, 182 batting average versus Glavin, 240 versus Maddox. One home run versus Maddox. One home run versus Goose uh, Rich Gossage. Goose. When did they play? How old was Gossage here? How old was... Oh, man, I had so much fun on baseball reference this morning. I don't think it pertains to anything. How old was Gossage in 39? Okay, I was going to say, it had to be pretty old, dude. Gossage played in the early 70s. Gossage straight skipped everything. Went high school to pros, I think. Got drafted out of high school. Then he injured his arm in a hunting accident. He got shot. No, 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 no. That's catfish hunter. I'm thinking of catfish hunter. I got my I got my gooses and my catfishes fucked up. I make I missed them all up. We can do a nickname check right here. Let's do a quick nickname check. Oh, made my face big by accident. Something I keep doing. I'll just let you see. I feel like maybe you guys want to see half of my big head. What's going on? Nickname check. Ricky, Carney, Jose, Harold, Willie, Mark, Terry, Jerry, Mike, Lance. It's really not a lot. What the hell is the name Carney? Is that a real name? Is that short for something? No. Full name. Carney. It's like an insult if you call someone like a, you know, like a carny, like a traveling circus guy, but not even the circus, just the carnival. They name their son Carney. Is that a name? Should I know that name? I've never heard the name Carney before. Baltimore Orioles, nickname check. Brady, Mark, Cal, Chris, Mike, Glenn, Randy, Joe, Leo, Cheeto. Storm's a nickname. Storm is a nickname, so that's cool. And uh, his real name was George Earl Davis. Not related to Glenn Davis, but they are, they do consider themselves brothers if you haven't heard. And Cheeto is a nickname. Ryanaldo Ignacio Martinez went by Cheeto. So two nicknames. Nickname check in the 90s is not nearly as fun. Glenn Davis home run off Goose Gossage. Why don't they have Goose? Why do they have like, why do they have all the, why do they have old tomato face Boyd as his nickname? But for Goose Gossage, they just have Rich. Baseball reference. Where does your nickname agenda come into play? Who gets a nickname and who gets, because if, 
if Goose should be Goose Gossage. That's kind of all my thoughts on it. Thought I might have had more to say, but I don't. Um, is there anything else about Glenn Davis that's cool? He made this play. Oh, that's super zoomed in. He made this play once, which is interesting. He, uh, all right, ready? First base, he's running towards the dugout. He hops the fence and goes into the dugout. Which I didn't, I guess that's allowed, but usually they just lean over and then fall in. Like he straight up hops the fence and then he's standing in the dugout and then he makes the catch, which I don't know. Super slow mo. Is this legal? Are you allowed to be fully standing in the stands and make a catch? No, it would just be a home run or a foul ball, right? Well, you can dive in. I have no idea if there's a rule about that. That's a great catch. The fact that he jumped the fence is awesome. But can you be fully standing, not in the field of play, and make a catch? That's the question I'm posing. And I'm sure people in the chat will give me answers, and I'm not going to believe you. I'm going to have to look it up myself, or, or, or I'll forget, and I won't look it up myself. But... That seems, is that legal? We got a lot of that can't be legals in the chat, which is what my brain's telling me. It feels like you can't just jump into the fan stands and then catch something. If you, both of your feet are planted before you make the catch out of play, it seems like that ball's out of play. But they called this one an out. So, wow, confusion abounds on the morning show. Welcome to the morning show. My name's Jimmy. This is bite-sized bits of information of all of my things that I like. Geography, history, American towns, baseball, books. Now that I've done the intro, we can move on to the uh, third or fourth segment of the show. That was Glenn Davis, who considers Storm Davis his brother, but they're not related. And that's all I have to say about that. The random book of the day is Call of the Wild. And uh, I'm running late, and I didn't think of a book, so I just grabbed Call of the Wild, okay? Just grabbed it because I basically want to get the zeitgeist, uh, the opinion of the chat. Is the movie good? The trailer made it look super Disney and corny and... And the animation kind of was like weird. But I mean, the book's good. The book's weird because you're reading from a dog's point of view. And there's there's like, you know, it's a real quick read if anyone hasn't read Call of the Wild. But you're reading from a dog's point of view. And uh, he's like a house dog. And then he goes and becomes a sled dog. And there's some French dudes and he wins. And then he becomes like a, like not a racing sled dog, just like a working sled dog, I think. But then he's like, I'm not going to go on that ice because it's going to break. And his owners are like, we can't understand what you're saying. Your dog, take us across the ice. And he's like barking. Like, I'm not going to go across that ice. It's going to break. And and the owners are like, don't know what you're saying because you're a dog. And then he doesn't go on the ice. They beat the fuck out of him. And then the ice breaks. And those owners, I don't know if they die or whatever. Spoilers. And then he meets Thornton. Right, and uh, they become fast friends. I'd love to read how Jack London pitched this book. Did he shop it and say, I'm going to write a book from a dog's point of view? Will you, will you pay for it? Because it seems very childish, and like a, but it's not a childish book. It's an adult book. Were people cool with it? Like, yeah, great. We'd love to know what a dog thinks. This isn't what a dog thinks. This is what Jack London thinks a dog thinks. Anyway, I'm going to check the chat. Um, it's like a really quick read, so I basically forget it because I probably read it in like one sitting. 
it's like a hundred pages and from a dog's point of view. So, you know, you can't really trust the writer because he's never been a dog. So, you know, you can't be like, oh, this is what a dog thinks. It's like, no, this is what Jack London thinks a dog thinks. No one knows. Jack London's never been a dog. What gives him the authority to write about it? It's a good book. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. Go read it. Tell me, is, is the movie good? Movie, I got one here that said the movie blows. Okay, pretty bad movie. Good on the guy who searched the rules. All right, all right. V. Lith in the YouTube chat. Rule 6.05a. A fielder may reach into a dugout to catch a fly ball as long as one or both feet is on or over the playing field and does not have a foot on the ground in the dugout, dugout when making the catch. So that was an illegal catch. If we want to go back and, and watch it again, that was an illegal catch. You know what? I bet the, I bet the comments on the YouTube video that we're watching someone commented that rule or this is the discussion. So let's see. He has both feet firmly planted in the dugout before the ball enters his glove. So illegal, zero comments. Only 1,000 views. Tough break. Tough break that, that has no views. No one knows about it. Maybe it is a legal catch. Highly illegal, not allowed. All right. Well, uh, Call of the Wild, bad movie. I don't want to watch it now. That's what I'm. That's what I'm hearing. Cool. That was Call of the Wild by Jack London. Read it if you want, and if you' not interested in reading a book from a dog's point of view, don't read it. I have to say about that. At UConn, there are a group of eight kids that rode around campus on unicycles. Yeah, college is great. College is great for that reason, man. You know, think about all those kids. They were probably one of one or one of two at their high school that rode unicycles, you know? And then you go to college and you see a flyer or you see one kid on a unicycle and you're like, fuck, were you the unicycle kid at your high school? I was the unicycle kid at my high school. You want to be unicycle kids together? And that kid's like, yeah, dude, I'm a sophomore here. We got a whole unicycle gang. We ride around on Tuesdays and then all the unicycle kids that were the lone unicycle kids at their high school have a group of friends. That's why college is the best, man. It's like, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, central Connecticut state, the, the dungeons and, and dragons crew. Like I know where that group hung out. They were in by the blue devil den, uh, the little hangout area. Like they all found each other. That's awesome. Uh, at Sonoma state university, there's a bunch of tightrope kids. They just set up a tightrope on two trees and hang out. And I'm like, wow, you guys all found each other here. Good for you. In the Northeast, summer hits 50 degrees at college and everyone becomes a Frisbee expert. And the lawn is just filled with people throwing Frisbee because they're like, it's so nice out. The winter's been so, let's go throw a Frisbee. And then they throw it like three times and they're like, this kind of blows, man. Not much fun you can have. Well, then Can Jam got invented later on in my college days that up the Frisbee game a little bit. Polish horseshoes is one of the best Frisbee games going. Love Polish horseshoes. Uh, what are, I mean, ultimate Frisbee. Yeah. Disc golf. I'm a big, I like disc golf, but that's not Frisbee. Those are, those are way different, but yeah. Um, college is great, man. All the unicycle kids can find each other. Boom. Aussie Rules footy came back tonight. Did you ever get into it when you lived here, Jimmy Boy? Benair15 asked. I did. I watched Aussie Rules football on Saturdays when I lived in Australia for those two years when I was little. I never played it. Uh, we played cricket and rugby on, like, the, the school yard and in recess and shit. Never played Aussie Rules. But I, I met the dude who, in 1999, had the most points. I don't know. This might not be the right phrasing. Most points ever. I think his name was Matt something. I met him at an Aussie Rules game. My parents said, go take a picture with that guy. He's famous. And I said, okay. And then we took a picture and I don't know. 
don't know. I don't know. Alec Bear says, explain Polish horseshoes. Oh, you guys don't know what Polish horseshoes is? Um, maybe that's not like the proper name for it. Oh, here it is. How to play Polish horseshoes. They have like sets here. Nah. Don't use a set. You take, ah, they make everything so lame with their like sets. You take a fucking ski pole. You take a ski pole. Look at this. Oh, I'm not even showing you guys. Sorry. Um, Polish horseshoes is cool. Everything gets like standardized and sold in a kit. It's not cool anymore. Um, so basically what Polish horseshoes is, is I've never seen all these sets that they have. It is a game. Okay, here's a pretty good picture where I could explain it. You put a beer bottle on top of a stick. We always used ski poles. You just slam it into the grass and it stands up because you want it to be wobbly. You don't want it to be incredibly sturdy. Um, the it's the people standing next to each other on our team, and then the people on the other side are on a team. So it's not like uh, can jam or cornhole where you're standing next to your opponent. And um, you throw the frisbee, and you want to hit the pole or the bottle, and it's. I believe it's one point or if the bottle falls and hits the grass, that's a point. I forget the points. And that's a point. If the Frisbee, the other team throws the Frisbee and the Frisbee hits the grass, like, you know, you just drop it has to be catchable within your arm span. Then that's a point. And if you hit the bottle directly, that's a point. So you can get three total points. So the other team throws it and then like, you know, say it, it hits the bottom of the pole. Then you guys have to like, one person has to catch the Frisbee and the other person has to catch the bottle. That's going to fall to try and, to try and not allow points. So it gets kind of scary if people are fucking whipping the Frisbee at the bottle, but it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. And if you want to be really bougie with it, you can buy this kit, which comes with fake bottles. making money off this it's just like a ski pole and literally the bottles you're drinking is all you need to play i love polish horseshoes i haven't played in a while but nice that's good they don't have drinks in their hands yeah it's also a one-handed game like the the catchers can't use two hands that's a good point it's a very good point by you We used to play that a lot, but, but, uh, oh, some people call it Beersby, not Polish horseshoe, horseshoes. Beersby. That's kind of, oh, this people call it Frisnock. There's a lot of names for this. Frisnock and Beersby. It's kind of lame. Beersby. Not a fan. Action shot. Beersby. Bottle Bash. Okay. Bottle Bash is better than Beersby. Whatever. Also have to have a drink in hand to play. Yeah. You, yeah, sounds like a super gay old time, to be honest. It is. Uh, We call it Fricket and play with two red solo cups. The solo cups, how, they just get annihilated, right? I think the whole fun of the game is the scariness that the bottle's going to explode in your face. All right. I think I got to go. 917, shit, I got to go. Damn, I forgot that I can't just hang out and talk because I got to go to the office. All right, thanks for guys. Thanks for hanging out. We talked about Penny Farthing. We talked about Disco or Beersby, which is a terrible name, Polish Horseshoes. Talked about Glenn Davis and Storm Davis. They're not brothers, but they were raised together, drafted together, played together, consider themselves brothers, have the same last name, but not brothers. And Call to the Wild, which I guess is a bad movie. That's what people are saying. So I don't think I'm going to watch it unless I see it for free somewhere and I'll tune in and out. Read the book, though. 
Unless you're not interested in reading it, then don't read it. It's totally your call. See you guys tomorrow. Yeah, all of my way. Well, she told me she was pregnant on the day I turned 18. And I did what you're supposed to do. I bought her.